The Overwatch World Cup may begin tomorrow, but that's not to say that the Overwatch League off-season news has stayed quiet, with loads of announcements being dropped in the past 48 hours. As usual, I'll be running you through everything that's happened since my last video to keep everyone in the loop and give my thoughts on the moves and changes themselves. I will just quickly say though, that after this news video I will be holding off on news until after BlizzCon, whilst I focus on the Overwatch World Cup over the next few days. There's certainly plenty of places I could start with, but I think I want to begin with arguably the biggest piece of news that dropped today, the announcement of the Philadelphia Fusion's 2020 roster. This is a team that's had a few rumours circulating above them for the last couple of weeks, so I, like many, was very interested to see what they were starting to put together, with KDG now at the coaching reins. Of course, we already were well aware of some of their players being under contract, but it was confirmed within this brilliant roster announcement video that Sado, Poco and Boombox would all definitely be with the team next season. Starting with Sado, I'm sure many people will be somewhat baffled by his decision to keep him on as their only main tank for next season, following what can only be described as an underwhelming and disappointing 2019, where he was clearly one of the weakest links on a struggling Philly side, particularly in regards to his positioning and decision making. The only logical thinking I can see in keeping him is that the coaches and organisation as a whole see a lot of potential in him that hopefully they'll be able to bring out, so personally I'm willing to give him one more shot leading the line, However, I certainly believe the Fusion need to bring in someone else of his position for competition and options to avoid a potential repeat of this year should Sado's performance not improve. Poco's return, meanwhile, is a move that makes complete sense and was honestly a no-brainer to begin with. I've been very vocal about how I think he's been this team's most consistent and reliable performer for the past two years, and unless a major offer came in for him, there was no reason to let him go, as he's certainly a very valuable member of this team, although I'll discuss his position a little more shortly. Lastly, there's Boombox, who, like the rest of the team, had a mixed time during the 2019 Overwatch League season, with a mix of great and poor performances. That said, his ability cannot be denied, and in the same vein as Poco, it wouldn't make too much sense for me to have seen him leave the team unless he received a big money offer for him, so his return is completely understandable. That said, these were three players who we technically already knew were under contract for the 2020 season, so what about the other members of the roster being announced? I'll first discuss those who are familiar faces to the Philadelphia organisation, as it was confirmed that Alarm had been promoted from Fusion University, Carpe had been re-signed despite previously being listed as a free agent, and in a cheeky debate at the end of the video, it was also revealed that EQO was also returning to the Fusion as well, having also been re-signed. Alarm's inclusion here came as the least surprising, with most predicting his promotion to the main roster for well over a year, way before he'd even turned 18. That time has now been and gone, and fans are getting excited to see what he can do in the Overwatch League. Despite Fusion University's recent hiccup in Korean contenders, for the past couple of years, Alarm has been one of the most promising and best flex support players within the contender scene that he for a long time dominated alongside his teammates. This current meta might not be the best in which he can demonstrate his skills, but as soon as Anna and Zen return, I expect him to pop off, a bit likely that he takes the starting spot from Boombox very quickly, if not immediately. Carpe's return, though, will be a very welcome one for Fusion fans, with rumours circulating early on that he could potentially be leaving to join an all-Korean roster, like New York or London. Instead now, reports suggest he has signed a new multi-year deal with Philadelphia, and what is a brilliant move for the team, as they ensure they are keeping their superstar man at DPS, who hopefully, with the meta looking more favourable, will be able to showcase his 2018 form that cemented him as one of the best players in the league. But now we get on to EQO, with his return to the team certainly coming as a welcome surprise to most, with the team only a week ago tweeting a farewell post and video as he entered free agency. At that time, I thought it was a really odd decision for the Fusion to make, and I personally think that bringing him back was the right move. Beside Carpe, they need to have another quality DPS player locked in place who is flexible, dependable, and a proven quality. All attributes I think can be said of EQO. Like others, his 2019 performances didn't show him at his best, but I put this more down to metas than anything else, just like others, and given his proven ability in the past to pop off on a variety of heroes, I'm excited to see what he can do within this really exciting roster. The reason I say this roster is really exciting is mainly because of the three new players who have now been officially revealed to be joining it for 2020, as the rumours were confirmed that Philadelphia Fusion had signed Funny Astro, Fury and Ivy. Neptuno's departure certainly was a sad one it appears for some Fusion fans, but I can assure them that in getting Funny Astro as his replacement, the team has made a perfect acquisition but at least in my opinion is an upgrade. Wing contenders on the Atlanta Academy, Funny Astro has demonstrated what an influential and talented main support player he is with a number of fantastic displays. Considering that he can slot in beside a fellow Brit in Broombox, or instead Alarm, I'm really fascinated to see how the Fusion backline performs, as the potential is definitely there for it to be top tier and one of the best in the league. Arguably though, the biggest announcement in this roster unveiling, and the one I expect to be talked about the most, is the pickup of Fury from the London Spitfire. Without a doubt, Fury has been one of the best off tanks in the Overwatch League for the past two seasons, and in my opinion, London's best and most consistent performer in 2019 as well, so I personally see this pickup as a major coup for Philly, especially with rumoured interest in him from others like New York. His arrival signals the intent that the Fusion are heading into 2020 with, as they're hoping to really challenge as a top tier team, rather than sit in the middle of the pack, and I expect him to play a major role in achieving this. I know some will wonder what this means for Poco, who I mentioned earlier is also confirmed to be staying. 
As far as I'm concerned, I expect them both to play major roles in the fusion next season. Philly's new head coach, KDG, has shown a willingness in the past to utilise his full roster as much as possible. And when you factor in the differing metas and travel demands, I could easily see both swapping in and out, even if Fury probably gets the knob more regularly. Perhaps there's even a possibility that Poco is asked to specialise in heroes like Zarya or Sigma, but overall though, I don't expect this to be a major issue, but we'll have to wait and see. This brings me on to the last member of the Philadelphia roster who was announced, in Ivy. It had been rumoured for a short while now that he'd be leaving Toronto, a move that totally makes sense given the defiance changing philosophy and recent moves that I'll discuss shortly. Ivy is a player that some may be a little surprised to be picked up by the Fusion, but for a large part of last season I thought he was playing really well and was one of Toronto's most talented DPS options. Crucially, I think he had some depth and cover at the DPS position, which Philly would otherwise be lacking, and I think he'll give the side some options aside from Carpe and Ikkyo, which depending upon the meta could prove to come in really handy. Evaluating this roster announcement as a whole though, I think the Philadelphia Fusion are in a fantastic position heading into 2020, with a really competitive and exciting team, filled with many quality pieces. I would personally go as far as to say that they're just an upgrade at main tank away from legitimately being considered a top tier challenger to teams like the Shock and Vancouver, and with their off season apparently still not over, I'm really interested to see what other value and depth they can add before 2020 begins. I know I've spent a long time with Philadelphia's roster, but there's been plenty of other announcements that have also been revealed today beside it. Starting with some news regarding the London Spitfire, who despite seeing Fury leave, have finally made the first player acquisitions this offseason, as Bernard and Fuse were brought in from the Fusion University. I know Spitfire fans aren't in the best place right now, with all their former star players leaving the site, with many refusing to see the positives in this move following the confirmation that Fury was now leaving as well. However, starting with Bernard, whilst he isn't on Fury's level, he's still a great replacement to have, and probably on a considerably cheaper contract. Bernard is a fantastic player that before Fusion University's hiccup in career, I'd argue he was the best EVA player in North American contenders, and had shown equally strong performances on Zarya as well, so they can take heart knowing they still have a really good player at the off-tank position, making him a solid replacement even if he can't match Fury's level. As for Fuse though, I can't say I have as much praise. It appears that my evaluation of him is quite similar to many others, as I don't think he stood out as being exceptional. Instead, he seemed to be rather average, and just from what I've seen of him, I think Quartermain is probably the better player at main support. The coaches probably see some potential in him that they can look to work on, because otherwise this is a move that does seem harder to explain in comparison to the Bernard pickup. From London though, I'll take a short trip over the channel to quickly return to the Paris Eternal, who after their flurry of announcements last week, also confirmed yesterday that six of their players will be returning to the side in 2020. Soon, Bembest, Nico, Cruz, Grey and Hip. We were already aware that Bembest, Nico, Soon and Hip were all under contract, but this announcement does confirm that both Cruz and Grey have had their contract options picked up. This doesn't come as too much of a surprise, given that the Paris Org is still committed to keeping their French core, despite the heavy recent investment in promising Korean talent from Element Mystic. However, it is nice to see that two of their most consistent performers from 2019, in Cruz and Grey, are returning for yet another year. All in all though, this does confirm that Paris are committed to a mixed team for next season, and it'll be interesting to see if it works, especially with some questionable returners in the likes of Ben Best and Hip, who I definitely think were poor last year, and could have been improved upon this offseason. We'll have to wait and see how it all pans out, there's still a little bit of room left if they want to acquire anyone else. They aren't the only team in the last couple of days to confirm most of the 2019 roster for 2020 though, as the Hangzhou Spark went one better by officially stating that seven of their players would be returning. Bebe, Sassin, Gushue, Adora, Rhea, IDK and Godspeed. Again, technically we were already aware that all of these players would be returning, as they were all under contract, but it's still nice to see the team officially confirm it especially as one of their players apparently under contract, Crystal, appears now to be on the way out with him missing here. That aside, I think the decision to keep the core of their roster is a perfectly sensible one to make, but ensures that the team has a pre-existing synergy to build around heading into the unknowns of localization and travel, with those being kept being their most consistent and high quality performers from last season. At the same time, however, the Spark also put out a goodbye post regarding one of their coaches, Supreme. Personally, I can't really comment on his quality and impact, but it appears that he was quite liked, and it'll be worth noting where he ends up and who comes in in his place. Now would be a good time though to return to perhaps what was the biggest news that was announced yesterday, as a major deal that absolutely no one saw coming was revealed, with the Dallas Fuel completing a trade with the Delhi Gladiators that saw OGE swap for Decay. Let's start by looking at this move from Dallas's perspective. From the sounds of things, OGE left on amicable terms with the team, whilst his loss will certainly be felt, with rumours suggesting that Gamsu are set to come in, the Fuel should be okay at main tank. As for Takei though, I was very surprised to see Dallas acquire him, but I think he brings a massive talent upgrade at the DPS position when compared to the players they currently have. Now some will argue that for how much hype surrounded him last year, and supposedly the massive bidding war that occurred for his services, his performance in 2019 was a little underwhelming, with Takei not exactly taking the league by storm. However, you have to take into account that the meta clearly wasn't favourable to him for a long time, and I expect him to have a much greater chance to show off his skills in 2020. 
While Dallas have acquired though, is a legitimate style compared to the other players of a DPS position as far fewer question marks and should hopefully make them more competitive especially with the news today that Note was also being re-signed, in a sensible move that should Gamsu now come, since the fuel have a solid core at every position, in Decay, Gamsu, Note and Closer, that hopefully they can continue to build upon in the off-season. Now looking at it from the Gladiators' perspective, I think that this trade is a brilliant move from the team that puts them in an excellent position at this moment in time. OG was clearly Dallas's best player last season, and one of the better main tanks in the whole of the league. The fact that they have now paired him alongside Space with a confirmed backline of Shaz and Big Goose just makes the mouth salivate at what a great foundation this team currently has with this really strong support and tank duo. Sure, they now have serious needs of a DPS position, but if this is something I expect them to address in due course, with some promising acquisitions, I can hopefully see that the Gladiators are brimming with potential, and with a couple of strong DPS pieces, they could be serious challengers next year. As for the trade itself, I think that at this moment in time, you'd have to say that both teams come out as winners. But obviously we'll have to wait and see results come through before we know the greater benefactor. It's about time I now discuss the Soul Dynasty, who've been quite quiet since they announced one of the first major moves of this offseason when they acquired Profit and Gesture. However, yesterday it was revealed that Toby had been re-signed for next year, whilst the Gen G Flex support player Creative was earning himself a promotion to the main roster as well. I personally like both of these moves as I thought Toby enjoyed a really strong showing in 2019, and it's great to see him return to the side again. Whilst for creative, he's shown himself to be a really promising and impressive player at his position, with really strong Anna and Zen that I'm excited to see on stage. However, there's clearly an elephant in the room, and as a long time Soul Dynasty and Lunatic High fan, I find it tough to say, but if you had any doubts before, this post should confirm definitively that Jaehong will not be re-signing next season, which I'm really sad to see. However, I do hope he succeeds wherever he ends up going, with the spark looking like the most probable destination of this moment in time. Besides these two players though, the Dynasty's coaching situation was also confirmed, with Chang Goon becoming the head coach, whilst MMA was promoted to assistant from Gen G. It'll be interesting to see if Chang Goon can finally realise the full potential of Seoul in 2020, but for the past couple of seasons has been a disappointment. With his experience of helping to lead London to victory in 2018, with the new signings of Profit and Gesture, he looks to be in a good place to start from. As for some other coaching announcements, I think I should quickly mention them here, with the news that Kazors has left the Elan terrain, as well as Curry Shot departing from the Guangzhou Church. Both again have been described in high regard by their former colleagues, and it'll be interesting to see what future opportunities they receive, with Curry Shot rumoured to be going to the Gladiators, whilst Kazors gets a great opportunity to show his ability as he leads the Netherlands into the World Cup. The last thing left to cover, therefore, were continued moves of the Toronto Define, who continue to stay in the headlines this off-season. First for the official confirmation of many rumours that Agilities will be joining them in 2020, as he's reunited with Karif. I don't think there's really too much to say about this move, as it falls perfectly in line with Toronto's new philosophy of building a more western roster, which is looking to take full advantage of Canadian talent that they can market back home. In Agilities, they have yet another really good DPS player, who has been a consistent feature of the Canadian World Cup team for the past few years, and being reunited with Kareev will inevitably be great for the pair setting into their new team, as well as bringing on board many fans of the pair. This wasn't the Defiance's only recent news though, as today, although they say goodbye to Ivy, in return they have welcomed Beast Halo, with his name now being shortened to just Beast by the looks of it. Again, this is another great pickup for Toronto that continues to shape what is looking to be one of the strongest Western rosters competing next season. He's enjoyed a promising time on Fusion University, who have been playing particularly well back in 2018. Perhaps more recently, some questions have arisen, but should the other rumoured pieces of Nevix and Shawfall now fall into place, he's in a great position to grow and succeed as part of one of the most exciting rosters entering 2020, thanks to an aggressive off-season approach that I think other teams should learn from in the future, should it succeed. But with that, I've exhausted all the news I have for now in relation to the Overwatch League offseason, and I'd like to thank you for watching if you've made it this far. As I mentioned at the start, it probably won't be until after BlizzCon I post another news video, as I'm looking to focus more on the Overwatch World Cup. So if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.